Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Capture Life as it Happens, the new Lycan Nano Workflow. I am Jennifer Woods of Labroots and I will be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Labroots and brought to you by Leica Microsystems. To learn more, visit leicamicrosystems.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Dr. Julia Koenig, Product Manager, EM Sample Preparation for Cryo Workflows. For a full biography on our speaker, please click on the Biography tab at the top right of your screen. Dr. Koenig, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you very much, Jen, for the introduction, and welcome everybody to our webinar today to present you the first commercial life cycle claim solution, our new Leica Nano workflow. When you work in electron microscopy, you know that a lot of workflows start with the sample preparation itself, which can be uh, tedious and very time consuming depending on the application you want to achieve. With Leica Nano workflow, this looking for the needle in the haystack is a thing of the past. In this workflow, we combine the strengths of both light and electron microscopy to directly identify the right cell at the right time point. And in the end, unlock the cell secret by placing dynamic live cell imaging data into ultrastructural context. So what we're going to do is we start our sample preparation on the living sample and image this, our cells in a living state until they reach the moment of interest. The advantages of live uh, cell imaging is that we know the molecular identity because of the fluorophores um, we use and we have all the dynamic data to check that we are really looking for the phenotype we are interested in and that we are also really um, catch the moment that is interesting for our ultrastructural analysis. On the EM side, we then have the ultrastructure that gives us the rich context and um, the high resolution to really see in detail what's going on. So in the end, we combine uh, the advantages of both worlds to get a much more complete um, picture of the function or the structure of our um, event of interest. However, there are four major challenges that we would like to um, address with our Leica Nano workflow solution. The first thing is that we need to keep the samples in physiological conditions at all times. This means from cell culture until the, uh, the transport to our light microscopes, um, during the light microscopy imaging until the moment of freezing. In the second thing is we need to capture fast cellular events. Cellular events uh, can depend from millisecond range until uh, hours or days, depending on, um, um, on the cellular event you are interested in. And we want to capture all different types um, of events with a, with a specific imaging system. Um, yeah. The third point is that we want to obtain excellent fixation results to really analyze the structure in high resolution. And the fourth part is that we, of course, need to retrieve the event of interest that we uh, focused on during our live cell imaging in the electron microscope um, later to really correlate the dynamic data with the underlying ultrastructure. And in the next slides, I would like to show you in a little bit more in detail how we address these challenges in our workflow solution. This is how the Leica uh, workflow looks like. Uh, it consists of different instruments that we um, uh, streamline together uh, to really answer, um, yeah, to really overcome the obstacles I already uh, talked about. The first thing is 
uh, we start with the sample preparation in our newly designed sampling chambers. The sampling chambers are little mini incubators that keep the um, samples under physiological conditions from cell seeding until the moment of fixation. The sampling chambers enable a continuous gas exchange um, to do really long-term um, live cell imaging until the moment of interest is reached. Um, it gives you in the end more time to find the right uh, cell and also the right moment. The sampling chamber enables further very high resolution live cell imaging that we perform in the workflow with our newly configured Thunder Imager Nano. The Thunder Imager Nano is a wild trip system that is equipped with a um, um, fast as CMOS camera, camera to really capture fast cellular events. With the Thunder technology attached, it also helps to target and identify structures of interest in a, a high resolution. Furthermore, we use a specific sapphire corrected objective, I will talk later about a bit more in detail, to get the best, best possible um, resolution for our live cell imaging. After live cell imaging, we transfer the whole thing in the, uh, with a sampling kit to the high pressure freezer to enable a fast um, transfer to capture the event of interest. We, we are able here to have a transfer uh, in less than five seconds uh, from imaging until the, uh, until the moment of high pressure freezing. The transfer is very easy to, uh, to perform in a um, three-step semi-automated um, movement. I will also talk later a little bit more in detail. Um, the fixation, to get the best possible, uh, possible fixation, we use high pressure freezing um, with our already established uh, high pressure freezer, the EMIs, and all the benefits that come with this system. Furthermore, this life cycle clamp solution can be, um, can be also used together with light stimulation um, to, uh, to enable a more um, flex, uh, yeah, uh, enable more flexibility in your experimental setup. And the downstream sample preparation will be then done with our well-established workflow using the uh, free substitution in the AMF, uh, AFS2, um, the ultramicrotomy using the UC7, and uh, if needed, we can also do contrasting with the AC20. In the next slide, uh, I would like to show you some preparation um, steps that need to be done to get um, the live cell clam system working. The, in the first step, you need to prepare the, same, uh, the sampling chamber. So what we need to do is we need to attach the EMI's uh, middle plates and the, sample, uh, uh, and the sapphire to the sampling base cup to enable a fast transfer and furthermore to reuse also parts um, um, of the, uh, yeah, to, to reuse um, parts and consumables. In the second step, we have the sampling chamber that we then uh, need for cell seeding. So we seed uh, our cells directly in the, in the um, sampling chamber and the sampling chamber can then be placed in a, a standard incubator or into our um, oxygeny uh, transportable incubator. I will also talk in a minute about. Um, the third step is then incubation and transport. As I said, we can then transport our samples directly from the incubator to the microscope without um, interruption of the physiological control of our samples. Um, and then in the fourth step, we image um, the samples on the Thunder Imager uh, la, uh, Nano with the Sapphire corrected um, system uh, objective. And in the last step, then we do the transfer in our, with a, a three-step semi-automated transfer system that is directly attached uh, to the EMIs. Okay. Now I would like to uh, talk you uh, through some of the um, main developments of the lifecycle clam um, system that um, helps you to overcome uh, the different obstacles. First, as we discussed, uh, we need to guarantee that the samples are physiologically controlled 
um, throughout the whole workflow. Therefore, we designed the so-called sampling chamber, which is an open chamber design to ensure stable physiological conditions. It has a gas inlet and outlet and is uh, constantly um, um, controlled with CO2 and O2 and the temperature. This gives you the, the possibility to be really relaxed when it comes to live cell imaging. You can do live cell uh, imaging between minutes uh, and hours without compromising the sample quality. As you can see here, with the uh, open chamber design, we can keep the uh, temperature, CO2 and O2 um, control constant over a long period of time, while when you would use a closed chamber, the, the CO2 and O2 levels, as well as the temperature, would drop within a few minutes, which would give you only a, um, an imaging time of five minutes, while in our open design, we have this long-term imaging ability. And as I said, long-term imaging is very important uh, because of two, um, uh, yeah, two facts. One is that you need to ensure that the cell you selected shows the wild type or shows the phenotype you are actually interested in. And to judge that, you need to image the cell for a certain uh, amount of time to really ensure that is the phenotype. And the second thing is if you want to follow uh, or if you want to uh, target a specific process during a dynamic process, for example, mitosis that takes um, minutes to hours, depending on the stage you are interested in, you need to follow this process from the beginning. Otherwise, you can never be sure that you really catch the, the concrete moment of interest. So. Imaging for longer time is very crucial for this kind of workflow. As I said, the physiological control of the sample is, is a key factor for these kind of workflows. And uh, we work in this workflow together um, with Baker Raskin, who developed the Oxygeni, which is a transportable incubator that enables uh, the transport between labs but also institutes without compromising the sample. It is, enables multi-sample imaging because we can have up to six sample um, uh, sampling chambers in this little incubator and it holds um, the CO2 and O2 level for up to 16 hours uh, with the two gas bottles um, that are connected. Um, Depending on your imaging and on your um, experimental conditions, you can fill these gas bottles with any um, gas mixture you are interested in. So not only wild type or, or standard um, um, physiological conditions are possible. You could also um, uh, do um, experimental setups with um, low CO2 or low O2 levels if you are interested in that. As I said, um, we are doing our live cell imaging with a newly configured Thunder Imager Nano. Um, the, imi uh, the Thunder Imager uh, Nano belongs to the Thunder Imager family. Um, it's a system for hi high throughput for better statistics and workflow efficiency. It uh, gives you a high uh, imaging performance uh, um, for easy to use instruments, so also new users could easily um, learn to use the Thunder Imager for these types of applications. It uh, keeps the optimal physiological conditions um, to the samples, uh, and it can do accurate time-lapse multiposition experiments and tracking um, of cell chambers. So uh, with our setup, uh, you could also do multiple, um, multiple regions um, on the Sapphire uh, to have multiple samples in one run if you want to. Yeah, as I said, the Thunder Image Nano is an easy to use um, 3D live cell imaging system, and you also benefit with this system from, the, uh, from Leica's innovative computational clearing technology, the Thunder technology, that eff um, effectively removes the out of focus blur and uh, with that allows you a precise targeting of the structure of interest. And as you can see here in the image, on the left side you see a standard wild field um, image where you have a lot of background um, 
um, light um, from from the different um, um, planes uh, above and below. And with the thunder uh, technology, um, this uh, background blur is uh, removed that you can um, see the the details of your of your structure more clearly and especially for these kind of workflow this is very interesting because it allows you to have a, a more precise targeting of your structure of interest and a pre more precise location as i said in the beginning the thunder image nano is equipped with a very sensitive stmos fluorescence camera that allows you to capture live events in a um, in a very fast speed with a 90 frames um, per second. Um, this uh, fast speed of the camera is not only beneficial to capture the live uh, the, the, the the live events. It, it also helps us to create overview images of the six millimeter sapphire at the beginning to judge which region of the sapphire would be perfect to to follow uh, yeah to select. Um, a cell of interest. On the right side, you can see um, a six millimeter sapphire that um, uh, where we created an overview image in two channels, um, uh, in the green fluorescence channel, but also in um, transmitted light. And uh, we did this uh, overview already with our 40X 1.1 NA sapphire corrected objectives. So with the final magnification and resolution, and it took us 486 um, tiles to create this overview image. And imaging this in two channels took us less than three minutes because of the speed of the camera. Um, as I said, um, we are using here a specific sapphire corrected objective um, due to um, very important reason. So the sapphire has different um, imaging properties in comparison um, to glass. So if we would use a standard glass corrected objective, um, the, the wavelengths, for example, of the green and of the red, um, yeah, the green and the red wavelengths, they would not focus in the same, um, in the same focus position in, in C because of the, um, of the chromatical aberration of the sapphire. Uh, this would mean that the um, the picture in the end would appear uh, blurry and we wouldn't um, be able to target um, very precise. With the sapphire corrected objective, uh, the, this um, chromatic aberration of the sapphire is corrected so that the different wavelengths focus again at the same um, C height inside the sample. The last thing I would like um, to highlight is the transfer mechanism. As I said, um, we use here a three-step semi-automated um, transfer uh, to, to um, yeah, de decrease the time um, we need to um, transfer our samples from the um, light microscope um, into the high-pressure freezer. So um, we have first, a uh, so-called slide to release mechanism. So we are sliding the little mini incubator along uh, a, a ridge that is attached to the EMI's um, loading area. Um, with the sliding mechanism, the middle plate um, detaches from um, detaches from the mini incubator and lays directly in the freezing groove. Then we have the click to drop mechanism um, where we have our lid application arm with our closing carrier that closes the whole sandwich. And then we use the, the already established close to freeze mechanism of the EMIs to initiate um, the freezing. This um, semi-automated transfer uh, can be used for left and uh, right-handed people. And it can be also um, upgraded on all existing EMIs machines um, without uh, major modifications of the EMIs itself. Um, I want to uh, take one more minute uh, to talk a little bit about timescales of biological processes. 
uh, to put this five seconds transfer time into a, into relation. Um, when we look at the different uh, biological processes from very short to very long um, timings, we see that the fastest, uh, fastest um, events occur in the millisecond range. Um, these events like uh, synaptic vesicle fusion or uh, GPCR activation are not um, catchable with these life cell clam um, applications anyway. However, here you could use the established uh, EMI slide and or electrical stimulation to capture these types of events. Then we have a transition phase between one second to five seconds, um, which is more or less critical for a vesicle transport um, application. And here it depends on your biological question. Are you really interested in the transport itself? Then the five seconds uh, transfer time can be uh, limiting. However, if you're interested in the, the end result of a trans, uh, transfer, then we could potentially cap capture this with the five second transfer time. All other um, um, uh, dynamic process like uh, philopodia dynamics, clathrin me mediated endocytosis, uh, cell movements, mitosis and cytokinesis, they are more in the seconds to minutes to hour range and are easily capturable with our life cycle solution, especially because we can follow these dynamic events from start until the moment of interest. So I hope that I could show you that with the new Leica Nano workflow, we could overcome the obstacles that comes with live cell clam experiments. Uh, like um, we can keep the samples in physiological conditions at all, uh, at all times, thanks to the oxygen and our small uh, sampling chambers. We can capture fast cellular events with the Thunder Imager Nano and the uh, 40x sapphire corrected um, objective to identify and target our structure of interest. We can obtain excellent uh, fixation results uh, by high pressure freezing with our established EMI's um, high pressure freezer, and we can reliably retrieve the event of interest in the electron microscope uh, thanks to our um, semi-automated um, transfer mechanism. And with this, I would like to thank you very much um, for your attention. And I'm looking forward um, to our answer question and answer session. And with this, and I, with this like I would like to hand over back to Jen. Thank you, Dr. Koenig, for your informative presentation. We will now start with the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you would like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Okay, let's get started. Our first question is, do the high pressure freezer and the microscope need to be next to each other at all times? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, no, they don't need to be next to each other at all times. They can be, um, in different labs or in different facilities, they don't need to be on the same floor. The EMI is movable, so and can be for the experiments, can be transported next to the light microscope, and then uh, placed back to its original um, point uh, or parking position, uh, where you can then do your normal or standard um, high pressure freezing experiments. All right, thank you, Dr. Koenig. Our next question is. Would the workflow work also with other imaging systems like confocal? Yes. So um, we use for our experiments, we use the Thunder Imager uh, because of its flexibility. However, if uh, your samples require confocal imaging, you also could perform the workflow on a confocal like our new Stellaris platform. Great. Thank you again, Dr. Koenig. Our next question is, are the sam sampling cha um, excuse me are the sampling chambers one time use um partially uh, so you can reuse parts like um, the middle plate of the EMIs and um, the covers who close the little mini incubator 
However, the sapphire and also the sampling base cup, they are a one-time use and they should be um, replaced after each experiment. Um, maybe one more thing I would like to mention here is uh, we offer then also dedicated consumable packages um, that gives you or provides you everything that is needed um, for a certain amount of experimental runs. Thanks again, Dr. Koenig. Our next question, I'm going to try to pronounce everything. There are some abbreviations, and I think that's what this uh, uh, question is wanting to clarify. On the 40x OBJ, so OBJ, MOAT, objective. objective, MOAT correct, is mentioned. What does the MOT or the MOAT mean? Something motorized on the objective? Yes, so uh, exactly. The objective has on top a motorized coring. The coring is needed um, to correct some um, unevenness of the sapphire. When when sapphires are produced, they are, it's not so easy to have them um, as plain as um, our high quality cover glasses. So uh, having a motorized correction ring will help you to even the slight differences in the thickness of the uh, sapphire out. Perfect, thank you, Dr. Koenig. Our next question is, is the idea to unload the sample from the light microscope, load it into the high pressure freezer, and freeze it all within five seconds? Yes, exactly. That, that's the idea, and it actually works. So um, the, the five seconds account from taking the sample at the microscope, placing it onto the high pressure freezer, and freeze it. So this we call five second um, transfer time. All right, thank you again, Dr. Koenig. Um, this person asks, could you please give additional details of how you identify and select the cell of interest after freeze substitution? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that I uh, missed this point. So of course, um, at the first step, uh, we have our sapphire and we evaporate a grid pattern. This is, um, uh, um, yeah, we evaporate a grid pattern on top of the um, sapphire. This um, grid pattern you can see then in the transmitted light of the light microscope, and you see it after um, a free substitution and embedding inside the, um, the on, on top of the resin block. So what we normally do in the workflow is then, and it's also described in the in the application um, workflow application note, that we then do um, a imaging, an imaging step of the um, sapphire block um, on the microscope and then we overlay the block face with the light microscope to see that all cells are still there and then we go on um, to the sectioning. You don't need to do this step but we only want to ensure that everything is okay, that our, um, uh, our cells are still there and then do the, the subsequent um, sectioning and trimming. All right, thank you again, Dr. Koenig. The next question is, would drug treatment experiments be possible? Yes, um, they are possible with some slight modifications, um, but uh, in, in theory, that's not a big problem for the workflow to also do drug treatments. Great, and our next question is, is the light microscopy diffraction limited? Is there any possibility of SIM or single particle tracking? What is the detector for the light microscopy? Oh, that's a, a very tricky question for me as a non-expert um, in light microscopy. However, I try to answer it as, as much as I can. So the, the um, sapphire differs in some imaging properties from the um, uh, from a standard glass. So it's, for example, double breaking, which uh, makes uh, DIC not possible, and also stat imaging is not possible. If now structured illumination is uh, possible with this um, sapphire, I need to check um, with my R&D team and, and yeah, come back with this um, question. At the moment, uh, we use a, a, a CMOS camera on the microscope for imaging, but I think here um, we are totally flexible, as we are totally flexible from the imaging system, you could, I think, also use different uh, detection systems like we have it on, on focal systems, for example. All right, great, thank you again, Dr. Koenig. 
The next question is, will the objective be available separately? Uh, no, not at the moment. So this uh, Sapphire Corrected Objective is uh, currently only available um, with this uh, with the Leica Nano workflow. And the next question here is, wouldn't it be better to have a rigid connection of the light microscope and the high pressure freezer to reduce the transfer time? Um, that, that was also for us a very interesting discussion internally and in the end we decided uh, not to do it because of multiple reasons. So if we would have a rigid uh, um, connection between the light microscope and the high pressure freezer, um, we may have, would save two seconds or potentially three seconds and um, transfer time. However, uh, as I showed you before in the slide, the biological relevance between two or five seconds transfer time is, is not very high. Uh, on the other hand, if we would have this rigid connection, it would um, um, take the, the advantages that we have with this workflow away. For example, we wouldn't be as flexible with the lab, uh, lab setup. So the microscope and the, the high pressure freezer, they would need to be next to each other at all times. And um, also with, when it comes to imaging modalities, as I said, we, we showed this here with the Thunder system, but it also would work on a confocal. This, this wouldn't be so easily possible anymore. And uh, also immersion imaging, physiological control. Um, these are all parts that are then not as easy anymore as uh, yeah as we have it now. So in the end, we decided not to do it and have the advantages on the on the imaging side and on the on the sample side. All right. Thank you again, Dr. Kernick. The next question is: What samples can be used within the workflow besides cells? Uh, yeah, in theory, everything that fits in the um, in the in the in the freezing sandwich. So we use here a, a cover um, carrier with a hundred micron steps, and we have six millimeter um, uh, space in diameter of the uh, of the sapphire. So everything that fits into the six millimeter and is not higher than hundred microns um, should work with this workflow. Thank you again, Dr. Kernick. Our next question is, how easy is it to place an ultrastructural snapshot in the temporal contact if you don't have zero seconds transfer time? Yeah, as I um, showed this already before in the, pres uh, in the uh, presentation, the idea of the life cell clam is that you target a particular time or stage of a cellular process you are interested in. And this time point is mostly a structural change that you would like to analyze then on the on the EM side. So um, the most important question you need to ask yourself is how stable is this particular stage that you are interesting in? in? And for the majority of the applications that we are aiming um, with this workflow or addressing with this workflow, um, zero, two, three, or five seconds is not so um, relevant. However, if you have something fast, uh, for example, as I said, this, this tracking, um, um, tr um, trafficking, um, um, yeah, the, the trafficking um, topics, these can a little bit more tricky, and there we have to look in, in detail um, with the users what they like to achieve in the workflow. All right, thank you again, Dr. Koenig. Our last question is, do you have additional information or videos? Um, yes. We prepared uh, tons of material um, that we will release within the next um, weeks. So we have um, different application notes uh, that gives you more um, depth of knowledge on on the physiological control of the samples, why is this important, and how the, the sampling chamber is designed. We have an application note on the imaging uh, part that explains a little bit more deeper how um, um, how the Sapphire Corrected Objective works, um, why we developed this, and shows you more examples uh, on different samples, how the, the quality looks like. And we have a, um, a very detailed uh, workflow protocol that uh, 
shows on an example um, how we did the experiment, um, how much cells we seeded, how we coded the, the samples, how we processed them, how we cut them, and, and all these uh, types. Furthermore, there is a, a workflow um, protocol that uh, gives you a step-by-step -step description throughout um, and what you have to do on the technical side. And um, for this workflow protocol, we also created a lot of videos that explain more or less every step that we described in the manual, also in the video. And um, this will be then also um, available via the website or later also on, on YouTube. And um, yeah, you can um, find them then, um, everything is then um, on the website and uh, you get also the notifications in the newsletter. Thank you, Dr. Koenig. Do you have any final comments for our audience today? Yes, I would like to thank everybody who joined the webinar today. It was a pleasure for me um, to um, show you our new solution and um, answer all your questions. And um, yeah, if you have more questions, uh, reach out to your um, um, regional um, LICA contact and we're looking forward to hear from you. Thank you again, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Kernick, for your time today and for your important research. We would also like to thank Labroot and our sponsor, Leica Microsystems, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. Labroots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.